Yes, can you hear me? Test one, two. Carter, can you hear me? Savannah, do you have any ears on? Test one, two. the Lord today say amen. amen good to have you here this morning at church and uh, today is our graduate recognition service and I'm glad you're here I look around I see a few new faces and uh, maybe we have some visitors this morning if we do I want you to know there's a little connection card there in the pew in front of you if you take a few moments and fill that out for me I'll be happy to receive that and uh, be, be able to meet your need whatever it may be and also pray for you as well 
Uh, hope you got a bulletin on the way in. Did anybody not get a bulletin on the way in? I know some, some Sundays we're, we're running out because we have so many who are coming to both of our services now, but I hope you got a bulletin on the way in. And there's a lot of activities and events that are happening here at Burns U Baptist Church. I just want to emphasize maybe one or two of them for you. Uh, Laura Cloutier, there's Laura. Laura, today is the last day to sign up for the women's Bible study. Is that correct? So in your bulletin, you're going to notice that there has been, for the last several weeks, a women's Bible study uh, being advertised there. And so today is the last day to sign up for the women's Bible study. So if you're interested in that, please make the effort today to sign up. Also, you're going to notice inside of your bulletin that today that there are a lot of uh, things going on, especially with the Vacation Bible School. There's an insert uh, this morning about our adult class, the full armor of God. And Brother Tim, uh, Tim, raise your hand. Tim's going to be teaching this class. He taught this class last year, not this topic, but he taught our adult Vacation Bible School last year. There's still a little information here about some help needed. We pretty much have most all of our bases covered, but there's still a little few areas here and there. If you'd love to participate in Vacation Bible School, would help us out, uh, please let me know or Shelly know, and we'll get you plugged in. Uh, every year, I think all of you who've been in our churches for years know just how important Vacation Bible School is. God has used Vacation Bible School over the years as a major, major evangelistic outreach arm of our church. Only heaven knows how many young people, uh, even adults, have come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ through the ministry of Vacation Bible School. So here's the least thing that you could do. Pray and then pray some more. Pray for our Vacation Bible School. Pray for our leaders. Pray for the students that will be coming uh, for that week. And it's just around the corner for us. So keep that uh, in, in mind uh, as you uh, work through this week uh, and, and live out your life. So at this time, we're going to ask Brother Davis to come up. Davis is our youth pastor, and we have some graduates that we want to recognize here this morning. Their picture is going to be on the screen, and Davis will give you a little information about them. Uh, not only that, but he'll have our prayer this morning when all this is over, okay? Thanks, Tim. Morning, Burns View. Uh, we'd like to do our graduate recognition service, uh, get that started this morning. So let's welcome in our graduates of 2023. our graduates by name this morning have a little gift for uh, each of them from the church and our graduates are also going to tell you a little bit about where they are going next so we can start this morning with miss peyton howard I just wanted to say thank you first for the church and John's Sunday school class for the amazing food and the even better word of God. <laughs> I will be attending College of Charleston in the fall and studying psychology. And obviously, as you can see, I graduated from Malden High School. <laughs> Next up, Mr. Alex Vaughn. Thank you. 
seek to not lean on our own understanding in all our ways that we would just trust you and have faith in you wherever you lead us. God, give us an answer to this time of worship and singing um, your praises that you so rightly deserve. We pray that we would sing with a heart of worship this morning. I pray that we would um, sing in spirit and truth. together this morning. Say and do. It's the name of Christ we pray. Amen. All right. Good morning. Let's stand together as we worship our Heavenly Father, for He is worthy. He is worthy of our worship together. Crown Him with many crowns. Let's sing it out, church. Lift your voice. Turn 
seated in wonderful worship this morning. This time we'll watch a quick VBS promo video and we'll hear from our children's director, Shelly Adams. VBS is in just two short weeks, and we're still looking for a few people. We've expanded our classes, which is why we're kind of still looking for people at this point. We had such a great turnout last year that um, we've spread things out so that we can accommodate our growing area, which is an amazing problem to have. So we're still looking for our first grade leader and some games crew and a couple registration people, and that's really it. So just pray about it, and if you feel led to serve in that way, let me know. I would love to talk to you. As has already been said, there will be dinner every night. So guess what? If you serve, you don't have to cook all week. We're going to cook for you. That's great, ladies, right? Just come here. We're going to have dinner for everybody. There's, we're going to have salads so you don't have to worry about the pizza and the cheese sticks and all the stuff we got for the kids. We, we got you covered. So come. There'll be dinner. It'll be a great time. There's an adult class. There's classes for everybody, anybody. Everybody can plug in any way they want. Only two more things that Pastor Tim didn't talk about that I'm going to talk about. Pretty, pretty please. Scan the barcode in your bulletin to register your kiddos. Even if we know you, we need you to register your kids. The reason why, this is a really cool tool, and it's a digital tool. It is going to link digitally to your teacher's class roles. And what's going to be able to happen is those class roles are going to have a digital, I'm going to send the class role, I'm going to email the class role to the teacher, and if something goes wrong with your child, They'll be able to click your child's name and pull up your phone number and call you without having to come find me. So if an emergency or something happens, they can get to you so much faster. So pretty, pretty, pretty please scan those codes and get your kids registered in that way. Even if, like I said, even if we know you. Secondly, our missions are going to be a little different this year. We're going to have a lot of fun because it's castles and kingdoms. So I couldn't resist adding a twist to what we normally do. So what we normally do is we do boys and gets girls and we have the buckets and the measures and all of that fun stuff. But I got to thinking, I was like, what if there was a royal jail and we locked people up? <laughs> That's much more fun, right? So here's how that's going to work, just so we can talk about it, because there's a couple rules. So here are the royal jail cell rules. So a person's name will be turned into the royal guards, and there will be royal guards, and there will be a jail cell. And the royal guards will go lock that person up. So when you go to lock somebody up, you will pay a bail amount. So we'll just keep it nice. We'll say, I'm going to go lock up Steve McKinney for $20. i got to pick on you. <laughs> so they're going to go lock up Steve McKinney. And they're going to say, okay, Steve McKinney, your bail is $20. So whatever amount you pay to lock up is what that person has to pay to get out. So, but let's say I locked up Steve McKinney for $1,000. He's like, I don't have a thousand dollars. So what you can do once you're locked up, you can either bail yourself out if, if it's a good amount, you can bail yourself out, or if you got friends, you can phone a friend from your jail cell and be like, hey, I need five friends to come come bail me out of jail. However you want. So there's that. And another twist. So the same person can only be arrested twice during VBS. You can only be arrested twice, Steve. <laughs> It'll be okay. And then for our little friends, so our little friends cannot be arrested because we want our little friends to stay in class. But little friends, you can arrest your older siblings that are in the youth group. So there's something fun for everybody. So there's our fun twist. All the money's going to go to missions. So if you're thinking about who you want to put in jail this week, maybe somebody in your house needs to go in the doghouse. You can do that. 
But anyway, so I'm going to invite up our Deacon of the Week to pray over our offertory prayer. Thank you guys for your support and help with EBS. I appreciate you guys. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you renew to us every single day, Lord. We thank you for the privilege of being able to say, I get to come to church, Lord. I get to praise your name and all the things that we do, Lord. We pray that you'd be with these graduates today as we recognize them, Lord. Support them, keep them safe, and protect them as they go adventure out into the world. We pray for this offering, Lord. Bless the gift as well as the giver. We promise to you that we are children of thy kingdom, Lord. I pray today, if there's anyone here today that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray today will be the day they hear your voice, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, choir. Take a moment and greet those around you while the choir comes down this morning.
thank you, Brother Austin. Let's give Austin a big hand. That is, that's pretty good, isn't it? Amen. Thank you all for being here. Let me invite you to get your Bible. It's going to be Joshua chapter 5. I noticed in the bulletin this morning there was not a sermon title or a text, so I just sort of opened up my Bible this morning. I said, wherever my finger runs, that's where I'm going to go. So it's Joshua chapter 5. So it's a potluck Sunday. Potluck Sunday message. Joshua chapter 5. I'm going to talk with you this morning from graduation to commencement is the message today. From graduation to commencement. We're going to be in Joshua chapter 5. Good to see everybody here this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness. Joshua 5. This is a very exciting part in the Bible. And I want you to follow along with me this morning as I read. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man, did you notice it's capitalized? This is not just any run-of-the-mill man. This is the God-man, the pre-incarnate Christ before his birth. A man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? He said, no. In other words, I'm not for you or your adversaries. Why? But as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, take your sandal off your foot. For the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for another opportunity to be in your house today to worship the one who saved us in spirit and in truth. We're so grateful for our graduates today. I know, Lord, that they have put in a lot of hard work. Many of us, if not most of all of us, have graduated at one point in our life that are in this place now. And what a thrill it is to be have graduated. And, and now these young people are going to be commencing. They're going to be starting something new very soon. And so today we ask that the Holy Spirit of God to be our teacher as we study this. And we pray, Lord, in a very real way for that brother, that sister, who's just having a tough time, a very difficult time. We lift them up to you in prayer today. There are many, Lord, that's in our church family not well this morning, and we pray that you'll be Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. We pray, Lord, according to your will. And now, Lord, we just pray as we open up this word that you'll show us your truth. And, Lord, say, this is the way. Walk ye in it and give us the faith to do so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, today we are celebrating our, our graduates uh, this morning, and, and you know it costs a lot. I think a lot of us know this already, that it costs a lot of money uh, to get a good education these days, particularly if you send them off to college. We see that the, it's just, the tuition is just continuing to climb. Uh, I read a story about this mom this past week. She was trying to get a, a photo of her son and uh, his father. He had just graduated, and so she wanted to get sort of a, a, a natural-type photo, and she said to her son, Son, will you go over there to your father? I want to get a picture of you two, and, and I want you to just put your arms around your dad and, and make it look as natural as it possibly can look. And, and the father said to this husband said to his wife, he said, well, if you really want a natural photo of me and my son, you'll get a photo with him reaching into my pocket to get my bill photo. That'd be about as natural as you can get it. Well, you know, it does cost a lot of money to get a good education, but I want to tell you, if you have a good education, you ought to thank God for it. Amen. And uh, I want you to listen to what Benjamin Franklin said about a, a good education. He said this, if a man empties his purse into his head, be assured that no one can take it from him. Isn't that true? Amen. You know, there's a lot of things in this world that people can take away from you, but they can't take away a good education. 
If you got a good education, you ought to thank God for that. Won't we just thank him now for what he has allowed us to learn over the years? Amen. Amen. Well, you know, it is a joy to speak to our graduates as well as all of you this morning who are presently enrolled in the University of Life. How many of you are enrolled in the University of Life? That would be all of us, right? Two people raised their hand again. Where are the rest of you today? I don't know. But, you know, we're, we're all in the University of Life, the, the life of hard knocks. Have you ever heard that before? Man, I'm in the school of hard knocks today. And uh, we really live, most of us are living in the real world. Well, keep your Bible open this morning. And I want to talk about Joshua. You know, Joshua had his own graduation and his own commencement. And the way, listen, and the way he handled it can be a valuable lesson to all of us. So I want you to just sort of listen as, as best you can this morning and, and let God teach you something from his word you know, Joshua, he graduated from the University of the Wilderness Wanderings. That's where he graduated. And brother, you talk about a hard school. That was a hard school. About two million started out, and only two graduated from the University of the Wilderness Wanderings. And so he had his graduation, but he's about to commence because, you see, God had promised them a land that flows with milk and honey, and he is in this conquest, and he is ready to take the land. So he's facing Jericho. He's about to commence. And I want you to know, too, that the word graduate and or graduation and commencement, they're two different words, really. Sometimes we sort of loop them together. But when you graduate, it means you finish something. It means you've completed something right when you graduate particularly a, a school but when you commence it means you're about to start something new it may be like a new job a new ministry a new school a, a new marriage uh, commencement is you're on the verge of starting something new so here's joshua joshua is headed to jericho he's about five miles out of jericho and jericho it has a a pretty big reputation for being a fortified city. And so, you know, he's excited. I believe he's excited. He's excited that he has graduated from the wilderness wanderings. But I also believe he's, he's a bit excited about taking the, the, the new land, the conquest, uh, the land flowing with milk and honey. But at the same time, I also believe that he is entering it with a, with a little bit of concern because he's not sure what's out there. He's not really sure if he's up to the task. He's not really sure what exactly he's going to face. So there's a little bit of hesitancy on the part of Joshua. So we can learn some things about this. So let's say, for example, you've graduated. Maybe school, you're going to start a new school. Maybe you finished something. Maybe you're out for a new adventure. And I don't know about y'all, but I like new stuff every now and then. Can I get a witness? Any y'all like new stuff? I like new stuff every now and then. I like a new adventure. And, and I want to listen to God to see what he has in store for us, even as a church. You know, every now and then, God will move us in a direction. And I'll say, God, I'm not so sure about that. Are you sure? <laughs> God says, I'm sure. <laughs> and and so, so I'm excited about those opportunities. But at the same time, I'm a little concerned because I don't know exactly what all that involves. So you, here you have Oh, Joshua, he's graduated, and he's commencing as, as well, and we can learn some things from him. You know, when it comes to graduation and commencement, I think we get a little bit more about being graduated, amen? Boy, I couldn't wait to get out of school. How many of y'all were glad it just took forever to get out of high school, right? And then after high school, you just moved on. You know, I went to college for seven straight years full time. How many of you believe in the rapture, that the rapture is going to happen one of these days? Amen. That's the first part of his second coming, the second coming of the Lord. The Lord says, I'm going to return, and we believe that. Amen. Well, you know, after seven straight years of college, I'm thinking, Lord, I believe in the rapture, and I know I'm about to graduate from seminary, but could you hold off just a little bit till I get that diploma in my hands because it's been so much work and it's taken so long? You know, some people can't, uh, graduate, what, magna cum laude? What is that other one? Summa cum laude? You know how I graduated? 
Thank you, Lordy. Amen. That's how I graduated. It's been beautiful. It's been beautiful. And you know, after I graduated, I don't know how many of y'all, how many of you still have dreams about being back in school? You ever done that? Boy, I did that, especially when I graduated. I had dreamed I was back in school, and I'd be taking a test, and I'd be thinking in my dream, I have not studied for this test. <laughs> I'm going to fail. I wake up, and I see the diploma. I say, thank you, Lordy. <laughs> I'm here. All right, well, let's look at Joshua this morning. Keep your Bible open, Joshua chapter 5. And here's what Joshua does. And this is a great lesson for you and me. And I want you to be excited about your future. Amen? You know, when you look out there at the world scene today and the geopolitical situation, you read the news, all that stuff. Boy, it's so depressing, isn't it? It just doesn't seem like we're going to have much of a future. But I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that if you're in the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got a great future. Amen? Jesus makes all the difference in the world. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen 10, 20 years from now or even 10, 20 days from now, but we know that the Lord has the whole world in his hands, and you can take comfort in that. So as Joshua commences, here's the first thing he does. I mean, he's facing Jericho. He's about to go into a big-time battle. He knows this. And so the first thing he does is he looks up. Notice what the Bible says in verse 13. The Bible says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho. So what did he do? The Bible says he lifted his eyes. That's number one, and look. So as you commence, as you start something new, whether it be a new marriage, a new home, a new career, a new job, a new opportunity, a new adventure. You know where you ought to be looking? You need to be looking up. And I hope, and while you look up, who are you going to see? The Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let me give you a little bit of background on where he is at this point uh, in Joshua chapter 5. It's probably very early in the morning when Joshua heads out to Jericho from the camp of the Israelites. Uh, it was about five, a five-mile journey. And as he travels toward Jericho, just envision this. I, I'm sure his heart was filled with excitement because, man, he's, he, he's graduated from the wilderness wanderings, right? So I'm, now it's conquest time. And so his heart's filled with excitement. But he's a little concerned because of the conquest, the battles that he's going to face in order to possess the land. So probably, in my thinking, maybe as he is marching toward the promised land, as he's doing that, I'm thinking maybe he has his head down. Maybe he's thinking about it. Maybe he's very concerned. I wouldn't say he's worried because he has seen the might and he has seen the power of God. And God had said to Joshua, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. And aren't those encouraging words? You know, I want to apply that to us folks here at Bernersee Baptist Church, as I was with Moses, as I was with Joshua, I will be with you. Amen to that. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen, amen. So, so I'm grateful for that. So he's headed toward Jericho. He's excited that he's graduate. He's commencing, and he has a little bit of concern. But if you look down here, notice as he looks up, what does he see? The Bible says he sees a man, but not just any man. This is the pre-incarnate Christ as if he were a man, standing before him with a sword drawn in his hand. So can you imagine that scene? Oh, my goodness. I'd be excited. I'd be thrilled. But you're going to notice how he, he responds here. So this man is what we call a Christos. Christophany, okay? It's a pre-incarnate uh, Christ before his birth at, in Bethlehem. And the message here really is, is simple. As you commence, you look up, you see Jesus, and I want you to notice, I want to go through some of these verses with you this morning. So as he looks up, he sees the pre-incarnate Christ, and, and he's looking for direction. He's looking for strength. He's looking for comfort. And the first thing I can see in these verses here, without exception, is that as he sees Jesus, he is, he is, he is, he is reminded of the presence of God. Now, I know all of us know the Apostle Paul very well. And, and there's a passage in the Bible, I believe, that's really fit for all of us here this morning. And it's from Philippians chapter 4. 
Let me ask you this morning, anybody here ever worry over anything? You know, there's a difference between being concerned and worry, right? Well, sometimes we just get to the point where we just worry about our future, we worry about our kids, we worry about our jobs, we worry about what's going on in the world scene. But I want to give you a word this morning from Paul when it comes to that kind of thing. And here's a great verse in the Bible to write down, to think about, even to memorize. And it's Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Listen to what Paul says uh, about worry. And he's writing on the inspiration of God. He says, be anxious for nothing. So what does that mean? That means be anxious for nothing, right? Does that mean be anxious for absolutely nothing? Right. It means nothing, right? Don't be worried about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and then what will happen? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will do what? Guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And if you were to look up that word guard there, it's, it's really kind of like, it's a word picture meaning sentinels. There's like sentinels around your heart, around your volition, around your emotions that, that just guards you from being all tore up, guards you from the toils of this world so that you'll have a peace that passes all understanding. Now, when I think about the Lord Jesus Christ and I look up to him and I see him, I can't help but to see, you know, his presence, obviously. But when you think about the presence of God, let's say, for example, this morning, man, you know Jesus is near. What does that do for you? When you know that Jesus is near to your life, your family, your church, what does that do? It brings you what? It gives you comfort. It gives you comfort, right? It gives you strength. And I know from the Bible, and I believe you do too, the Bible says that the Lord was with a lot of folks in the Old Testament. He was with a lot of folks in the New Testament. The Bible says when he was with Samuel, remember Samuel was a great prophet. And when he was with Samuel, guess what? God used Samuel in a mighty way to turn that nation around. May God be with the church in America today to help the church turn our culture around. Help turn our nation around. You know, our nation like never before needs Jesus. Amen? And we have a responsibility. We have a duty. We have a high calling to introduce to this lost and dying world the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He makes all the difference. And I read the Bible and it also says that God was with David. So what did David do? Remember the sling? Remember the stone? He took out a giant. The Bible says God was with Gideon. And when, Gideon, when God had eliminated a lot of people out of his army, you know, around here we often say bigger is better. Have you ever heard that before? Bigger is better. Bigger is better. But not always, right? Remember that army, uh, Gideon's army? God says you got too many, Gideon. We got to eliminate some. And he got him down to 300. And then he used him in a mighty, mighty way to destroy their enemies. So it is so comforting this morning. So here's Joshua Joshua looks up, he sees God, he sees the pre-incarnate Christ, this man, this commander of the army of the Lord, and you know it had to bring him comfort. And how great that is when you're about to go into battle, knowing that there's somebody, somebody on your side, his sword is already drawn, and he's going to do the fighting for you. Amen to that. Can I get a clap this morning? I, I'm really working hard today, y'all. Y'all got to help me out there. Got to help me. So not only the presence of God do you see here, but the power. So he describes himself. Look at what it says again. Notice how this man, the pre-incarnate Christ, describes himself. He describes himself as the commander of the army of the Lord. So what does that mean? That means you'll find it impossible to have another friend who is higher than the Lord. It is impossible to find someone else, whoever else, who is higher than the Lord. So let me ask you this morning. You need protection? Any of y'all need protection? How many of you been reading recently? Boy, they're still at it about trying to defund the police in our major cities. Have you seen that, read about that? Isn't that just nutty stuff? That They have a hard enough time just getting around to the normal stuff, much less defunding them, Right? And there's so many people who are worried about their security today, worried about their protection. But I want you to know that God is a strong tower. Amen? Amen. 
you can run to him and you can be safe. Amen? Let me ask you, do you need resources this morning? Who needs some resources this morning? Yeah, I could use some resources, right? Well, you know, our God owns how much? He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I mean, everything that we have, think about it. The Bible says it is God who gives us the ability to get wealth. Everything that I have has just been entrusted to me by God himself. He gives me the very air to breathe. I couldn't breathe if it wasn't for God giving me his air. Amen. He put clothes on my back. He put food in my stomach. He allows me to see. Man, I can read. We are blessed beyond measure because God has done it. And he keeps doing it. You know, when you're out there, you're worried about this and you're worried about that, worried about making ends meet. Somehow or another, you make it. Your refrigerator's full, your clothes are clean. And brother and sister, you have a roof over your head. You, we are blessed today. Are we not blessed today? Amen. But not only does he see the presence of God, he sees the power of God, he also sees God's purpose in his life. Keep looking here, and I want to show you something else here. So... Let's go back to this commander that, that taught with Joshua, this man, this pre-incarnate Christ. When Joshua looked up at him, notice the question that Joshua asked. What does he ask? So here's the pre-incarnate Christ. He has a sword drawn. Whose side are you on? I'd be probably asking that question too, right? Whose side are you on? Are you on our side? Or are you on our adversary's side? How did he answer it? He said, no. You see, because that is not the right question. You know, every now and then, I remember going through school and college and all that kind of stuff, and our professor always told us there's no such thing as a dumb question. You ever got that before? Well, this is a dumb question. <laughs> the question is not, God, whose side are you on? The question is, are you on God's side? That's the question. That's why he said, no. I'm on not anybody's side, but you need to be on my side. And that's what the whole thing is. Write this down. Here's a great little thought somebody mentioned one time, and I jotted it down. Listen to this. The first step in being a real success, because we all want to be a success, right? You want to be a success in business. You want to be a successful person. You want to have a successful family, right? You want your church, so forth. And, and, and God's economy is a little different than the world's economy. A lot different, right? God's success is different than what the world defines as success. But here's a great quote from somebody. Somebody said this. The first step in being a real success is not to get God to bless your plans. And that's what we do, right? We get ahead of God because a lot of times we think we're smarter than God. And we get ahead of God, and then we say, God, can you just bless this? So the first step in being a real success is not to get God to bless your plans, but for you to submit to his plans for your life and expect him to allow you to succeed. Amen? That's the way to put it. So Joshua was a man. He's filled with excitement because of his graduation. He, he has a little bit of reservation, trepidation when it comes to uh, Jericho. And so uh, today, when you think about it, ladies and gentlemen, as you take on something new, you graduates, when you take on maybe a new school, uh, maybe, you know, maybe some of you get married soon, that'd be a new lifestyle, and uh, whatever it is. Joshua needed a soldier's vision. Now, let me tell you why. Because he's a warrior. Joshua's a warrior. He's in conquest. He's in battle. He, God gives us what we need. Amen to that. Sometimes he gives us what you want, and it won't be so good for you. He'll give you your second best. But God gives us what we need. And so he needed a soldier's vision because he's about to go into battle. And God gave him a soldier's vision. And so when Joshua looked up, he saw God's presence. He saw God's power. He saw God's purpose for his life. And therefore, he's getting ready. He's getting ready to move even closer in to Jericho and to take that city. Now, here's the second thing he did. So let's say, for example, this morning, you're commencing. You're about to start something new. First thing you ought to do is look up and see Jesus. The second thing is bow down to him and worship. Notice what verse 14 says. 
The Bible says, And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped. And he said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? So you see what happens here? Amen? I mean, as soon as he realizes who, who's, who he's in the presence of, what does he do? He hits his knees. He bows down. And he begins to worship. That's the right response, right? When we realize that we're in the presence of God, should that not be our response? To bow before Him and to worship Him because He's worthy, amen? Worship just simply means to give God worth. Right now, you're giving God worth because you're listening to His Word being proclaimed. That's an act of worship. Earlier, you were singing praises to God. That's an act of, of worship. You're giving Him worth. That's what you're doing here at church. So he bowed down. He began to worship him. And, and, and really, notice the next question that he asked. Here's another question that Joshua asked the pre-incarnate Christ. What do you want me to do? You see that? So he, he's, Joshua's commencing. Joshua's he's doing something new rather than just doing the wilderness wanderings. He's in conquest mode. God, what do you want me to do? What should this remind us of? So if I'm to start a, a new marriage, if I'm to start a new job, or I'm on the cusp of starting anything new, who should I go to and ask for direction? We should ask God, right? God, is this your will for my life? God, will this glorify you? God, is this what you want me to do? I don't want to do what I want to do. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to be in the very center of your will. And this is exactly what Joshua is doing here. God, what do you want me to do? Isn't that a great question? Even before you go off to that university, before you go off to that college, before you uh, decide to marry that individual, before you start that new adventure, don't you think it would be wise to, to include God? to ask for his direction? Absolutely, and this is exactly what he does. Now, now that Joshua has looked up to see the presence of God, the power of God, and the purpose of God, he bows down, he worships, he, what do you want me to do? Notice what happens next. Then he, he went forth. That's number three, he went forth. So we're talking about commencement. Look at what verse 15 says. Then the commander... Of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot. I don't know if it was just, he meant just one or both of them. That's in the singular right there. I'd have to look that up. Somebody will tell me after service, I guarantee you. So, <laughs> take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. So, right now, now listen, Joshua has a new boldness. Joshua has new confidence. Man, he, he knows that the promised land has been given to them. He's in conquest mode. He looks up, sees God. God shows him those things, his presence, his power, his purpose. And then he bows down and worships. And, and God, what do you want me to do? I mean, he has seen the commander of the Lord's army. God has given him a soldier's vision that's exactly what he needs because he's, he's in battle mode. So here you got him. And, and so he says right here, I want you to see how he, how he went forth. First of all, he went forth in reverence. In verse 15, notice what it says again. Take your sandal off your foot for the place where you stand is what? Let's say it. It's holy. It's holy. Now, Joshua, listen to this. Joshua would have never thought the place of where he is standing is holy ground. He's in Canaanite territory. This is holy ground? Well, yes, it is. Because the commander says, you're standing on holy ground. So why is it holy? And I'll tell you why. Because anytime you go forth in the name of Jesus, in the name of our Lord, anytime you go forth, you can't separate the secular and the spiritual. For example, when I go to the gym tomorrow morning, I'm as to be as holy at the gym in the morning as I am in the pulpit right now. That's what he's saying. And so young people, when you go off to college, 
when you go to the university. God is saying to you through his word today, you are to be as holy in the dorm room as you are at church. And when y'all go to work, you are to be as holy. So anytime you go forth in the name of Jesus, God says it's holy ground. And you're to be holy there, and you're to represent him and, and to be the only Jesus that some people will ever see. Isn't it a great testimony if, if you are, are walking with God in such a way that he is all over you and, and, and you walk up to a stranger or a stranger walks up to you and maybe it's a co-worker, maybe it's somebody at school. They notice, they notice. They notice that there is something different about you, that there is God all over you. And, they, and you don't even have to tell them you're a Christian. They just know it through the way you walk, through the way you live your life. And brother and sister, these days, there is hardly any gray material left, right? We don't see much in between anymore, do we? I mean, you're either seeing the real deal or you're seeing the, the real deal either way, right? They're either really following Jesus or they're not following Jesus. There, there's not much middle ground left anymore. Used to, you couldn't tell the difference. You know when Jesus Christ was telling the parable about the wheat and the tares? You know, they grow up the same. They look very much the same. But after a little while, you can tell a little bit of difference between who's real and who's not real. Amen? So there you have him. He's walking in and going forth in reverence. But not only that, but he went forth in obedience. Look at verse 15. And Joshua did so. Now, did you notice that there are no excuses whatsoever in that sentence? Joshua didn't say, well, Lord, I heard about this big wall. Uh, Lord, I heard that they were strong fighting men. God, that we're outnumbered. There are no excuses whatsoever. And, and brother, oh my goodness, how often have folks made excuses when God says, this is the way, walk in it. But God, you, God, you just don't know what I know. <laughs> and we don't walk forward. So he does it in obedience. But he also does it in dependence. Because in verse 13, when I go back there, Here's what the commander had drawn. He had drawn a sword, and it is in his hand. So Joshua is facing Jericho. Soon he's going to have the fight of his life on his hands. But the Lord has a sword drawn in his hand. And so, in other words, who does the battle belong to? Can I get a witness? It belongs to the Lord. Your battles, my battles, the church's battles today ultimately belongs to God. And I'm grateful for that because I can't win it in my strength. You can't win it in your strength. If it were not for the Lord, if it were not for Jesus, we would not win these battles we face every single day of our life. So let me ask you, were you excited when you graduated? Nobody was excited when they graduated. We're going to have to turn the temperature down here, I, I believe so, because this humidity has just wiped us out this morning. I got here this morning, it was really hot and stuff, and I was already sleepy. And I said, Lord, you want me to do this today? He said, you get up there and do this today. <laughs> and you know, sometimes we just have to cut it up a notch, don't we? Sometimes we don't feel like it. Sometimes our heart's not there. But you know what? Jesus is worth it. We just have to... Uh, live beyond ourselves most of the time, don't we? And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to live beyond ourselves, that we may be a blessing. So I'm sure he was excited to get out of the wilderness, and uh, he's in the conquest right now. He's in Canaan land, and, uh, and, and he, he was somewhat excited about his commencement too, but he had some trepidation about it. He had some hesitation about it, and probably you do too. So when you go away today, say, yeah, you know, I can understand what the preacher said. You know, I'm about to start a new job, a new career, a new family. I'm getting new babies. You know, in fact, we get new babies every week. We're growing the church the old-fashioned way here at Burns U Baptist Church. Amen. <laughs> we've had to make room. We've had to move some rooms around here because we've got so many babies coming in. They're still coming in droves. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you, you don't know exactly what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Amen. How many of y'all ever heard of a guy named Hudson Taylor? Hudson Taylor, great missionary. Let me leave you with his wise words. He said there are three ways 
you can serve the Lord. You ready for this? Three ways you can serve the Lord. Number one, he said, you can do what you want to do and just hope it works out. That's one way you can go about it. Number two, you can do what you want to do and then ask God to bless it. That's another way to go about it. Or you can find out what God wants you to do and then expect Him to bless it. That's the other way you can go about serving the Lord. Well, you know, all of us are really in the University of Life, and one day we're going to graduate the University of Life. You know? So let me ask you this question. Are you ready to graduate the University of Life? Do you know Jesus? Have you been saved? Have you been born again? Have you been washed in the precious blood of the Lamb? Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's stand and let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and all your many blessings. You've been good to us. We're grateful for it. Lord, help us as we venture into the future to look to you and to have assurance and have confidence in your presence, your power, and your purpose for our lives. God, help us each and every day, not just Sunday, but to bow before you in holy reverence, to worship you and to give you the worth that you desire. And certainly not only that, but as we go forward, we can do that in reverence. God, we can do it in obedience. And, and certainly, Lord, uh, we thank you so much for what you've done for us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you need to come for prayer, the altar is open.